with uh, Andrew Spark. I and welcome everybody to this meeting of cabinet. Um, thank you for your attendance. Item one is members' code of conduct, declarations of interest. Are there already, Angie? Um, yeah, can I just declare an interest in item six, please, due to my previous employment with CGL and my current employment with CWP. I'll be leaving the room. Okay, anybody else? No? Okay, thank you very much. Item two of the minutes of the last meeting. Can we agree that I can sign as a true record? Okay. Okay. okay, item three. Executive key decisions taken under delegated powers. There, there are none. Okay, I, I took on to cabinet member reports. Item 4 is the only freedom of the borough she was awarded to the 96. Um, hopefully this, this report is self-explanatory, but um, I think quite rightly we are going to um, award this uh, freedom of the borough to the, the 96 people who lost their lives in the Hillsborough tragedy. Um, there's, a, there's an event uh, happening on the Friday, 15th September, 5 p.m. Um, uh, here, uh, and I think it's fitting, you know, it's right on top of what we do, um, uh, give this, this award um, for the, the the huge amount of, of, of effort that these families have, have gone through to get truth and justice, and I think it's quite right that the Council are bestowing this award on these, these 96 people who lost their lives, nine of whom were from rural. Um, can I just take this opportunity to particularly thank Joe Bloss, who has uh, worked tirelessly with the families and um, all the other relevant uh, people in, in just getting this this uh, organ this event organised. Really grateful to you, Joe, for the, for the effort you, you, you put in, here. and hopefully it will be a you know a, a, an opportunity for us to um, just say thank you and, and recognise the the. Um, the efforts that the families have put in over many, many years. So um, I'm really just going to ask Alice if we can formally uh, agree to the, the recommendation on page two. They agree. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that takes us on then to uh, item five, which is the World School Strategy. Um,
We, as a local authority, have a neutral view on academisation. The focus is always on what is best for the children of rural and for the young people of rural. So the, young, uh, the, the local authority has a good working relationship with schools, which include academies. And I know we've had problems lately with the King's, uh, King's Way, um, Academy, but that just emphasises the importance of the local authority being involved in helping to resolve situations when, when they come. Um, where school governors um, want their schools to convert to academy or to become part of an academy trust, um, the local authority will be there to help them to develop this and to facilitate it where they can possibly can be. Um, during the, tr uh, the transition of the current system into the new system, the local authority will have four main key strands for schools improvement and schools and schools to academies. So if they're transferring our role is to act as champions for the families, um, as a commissioner for key services, as a partner with all agencies working with families, and to provide uh, a small number of statutory services. That's going to be our role within this, this strategy. Um, the shift from local authorities to driving schools improvement for all rural schools. This is due to a number of factors. Academisation has shifted um, accountability, and we've seen that, and that's going to be quite difficult for us as we go forward. So it's 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 to increase uh, the autonomy, uh, autonomy, autonomy. I can't say it, sorry, autonomy of schools, um, and the national drive for school leaders to support and challenge one another to improve. So we've got teaching schools, national leaders um, and leading local leaders in education. Education services grant, which you will see from the report, has been drastically cut for us, has been reduced significantly. It's 3.2 million, which is an awful lot of money. So we have to find funding for um, these key posts. The, the, the grant that's there funds posts that um, is the, the person who acts as champions for the schools and is the intermediary between the local authority, uh, of, uh, the local authority and academisation. So this grant being, being closed and put down to us is really going to affect some of the jobs and some of the skills that we have. So um, it's, it's a massive mistake, I think, but well, it's something that we've got to fight wherever we can. Um, if, if, if you look at the recommendation that we have, there's going to be two recommendations within this report. Um, the first recommendation is obviously that we um, request that cabinets approve the strategy. Um, but the, the second recommendation, um, if you would allow me to have that, please, mm -hmm. The second recommendation is that the leader of the council, uh, I'm asking the leader of the council to write to the Secretary of State of Education expecting expressing our extreme concern at the reduction of rural education um, service grant, which as I've just said, if you look at the report, is, is 3.2 million. And um, Cabinet believes that this um, should be um, invested in our young people's education. Um, putting this budget is a huge, which usually you have to get retrograde to step and Cabinet demands that the government uh, reconsider this decision. I'm going to ask if the leader will approach the other leaders um, of the opposition groups and ask them to sign this letter that I would like sent to the Secretary of State. So there's two recommendations. One is that Cabinet is requested to approve the World School Strategy, which is um, appended to this report, and that we write this letter to the Secretary of State stating that we're not happy with the, the, the cut in the World's Education Service Grants. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Bernie. Is, is that, um, are those two res uh, recommendations are sort of moved by Bernie to second of those recommendations? George, okay, thanks. Um, comments, questions? I, I just wanted to, to sort of add my uh, support, first of all, for the strategy and, and also for, for the um, invitation to, to try and get government to reconsider this, this massive government education services grant, which as you say though, pays for the school improvement team. Yeah. The team that goes into our schools, work 
always with uh, head teachers and staff and handing on to people. Um, you know, particularly in those schools that have got challenges, and, and I just worry about where that funding is going to come from if this grant uh, seems likely it's going to be cut. So I think it is a big mistake. Um, and I think it's important that hopefully um, all parties in the council will put their name to a letter asking the government to rethink this because I think it is just um, a time when a time we should be investing in services like this, it's being decimated. So I, I thought we should put that Stuart. Thanks, Phil. Let's talk here. Your sessions and also the daily sessions. And what practices around the corner? I think we should be investing in our young people, not by investing in their education. To be taken away out of our young people, our education, that's our skills. Skills we need to move to the first one to be successful. Those practices. I think it's doing this. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got those two recommendations. Before we move to second date, can, uh, can we agree those recommendations, Cabinet? So they agree. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that then takes us to um, item six, at which point Angie will depart.
patient delivery of savings becomes increasingly more difficult with long wear determines to see through. We recognise the risks to the budget and the revenue budget contingency was created for 2017-18. At this stage of the year, the projections require an elements of this contingency to be allocated and this has been discussed. The headline position presently shows a four point two million pound loan spend. And by reporting these conditions at an early stage, it gives us time to identify options to reduce this in the coming months. As I, referred to, as I referred to before, the care services, particularly children's services, are the main contributing factor to this over spend. We've acknowledged that ensuring the safety of those within our care is paramount. And recognising the scale of the task of restoring children's services is one for us to take time to deliver. With the reduction in government funding, the Council is increasingly reliant upon generating its own income. It is clear that the retention of business rates comes with both reward and risk. There's evidence already this year that the volatility of the volatility of business rates, a successful appeal by a business to the valuation of its rules to retain their control, has resulted in the council having to refund over a million pounds of business concern. The other appeals are standing to demonstrate the risks to this council's finances and the need for the council to maintain the business rates with their business Okay, thanks, Jim. I just wanted to add to this. Clearly, you know, as you you quite quite you say, the um, the two <coughs> main um, budget heads in, in terms of uh, quantum funding, children's and adults, are under significant pressure uh, at the moment. Uh, we all know the, um, the social care crisis that we talked about on you know on cabinet cab and council many times before. Um, so it is an incredibly challenging period uh, in, in terms of local government funding. As we said at Council, we hope government might change direction on austerity to give us the funding to deliver those key services uh, properly. Um, you know, there's obviously an interesting debate going on in Cabinet uh, about that at the moment. So, I think that anyone saw the chance we expected yesterday morning that that, that debate is, is also being taken to the airwaves, which is. Uh, very, very interesting. But nevertheless, we, we have got a budget to manage and we will, uh, as we have done, uh, act responsibly and we will uh, deliver a, a balanced budget. But that does mean you know, it's incredibly important that the discipline around budget monitoring is, is, is um, adhered to. And you know, as you quite rightly say, Jeanette, we'll be looking uh, to work with, with officers at taking all necessary measures to bring those um, budgets um, into balance by the end of the financial year. So we need to keep that, um, you know, that at the forefront of our minds. So I think this is kind of work in progress. Um, <coughs> and uh, just ask Cameron to look at the um, recommendations on page two. Um, can we agree those recommendations? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Which takes us to item eight, capital monitoring for 2017-18, quarter one, Jeanette. Thanks, Phil. With this report set out for me, the first thing we're undertaking to support the delivery of our priorities. This includes our plans to invest in our own buildings and assets and how we can deliver services differently through our transformation programme. The programme for 2017-18 is an ambitious one, and the programme is subject to regular review to ensure that this is deliverable during the year. The most significant project is the Bridge's replacement scheme, which is largely finished by the grants and is progressing with the completion date for early 2018. Time scales for proposed investments in schools are determined with, it, with the schools. Essentially, it can be taken out of school time so as to provide minimal disruption to school life, so it's better than being cared for in the school months. Where they've mentioned is the importance of business growth with the growth of the company, key elements, and income generation. The programme includes funding to enable investments in properties that will generate a future income stream to the council. The generation of capital receipts is essential to fund the transformation programme as permitted under the government flexibility to March 2019. The target for 2017 18 being over 15 million, with the receipts from Baker Lane and Money Live key to achieving this target. And I ask Cabinet to be my recommendation to move forward. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jeanette. So, just uh, ask Kevin, can we read those recommendations on page 13 and 14? They agree. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Jeanette. Okay, that takes us to uh, item number nine, which is the annual government statement. So, we have um, uh, some recommendations.
recommendations uh, which you'll get from this management committee uh, referred to us in their meeting on the 12th of June. I think they are eminently sensible, so I'm quite happy to um, move those recommendations on item 9. Can we agree them? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us then to item number 10, which is the internal audit update. Again, this was covered um, by, this was discussed by all the audit management committee at its meeting on the 12th of June. And there were two, two issues that they highlighted around um, attendance and the issue of compliance regarding the recording of assets. So I've asked Chris Hyams if Chris, could you come along and could you just step up to the microphone and just give us a, um, a response to those uh, those issues raised by the risk management group? Um, the audit risk management um, board highlights that the 1617 uh, target for absence was achieved, however, identified a number of issues around the application of the absence management policy in particular, the reporting. We have worked with um, the internal audit to identify areas where there is potential under reporting, uh, and these were identified through, through the policy. Um, in terms of strengthening that process, uh, we put a number of um, uh, initiatives in place, including the on-site um, HR team in, in children's services that is looking at supporting managers in terms of improved reporting and improved application of the policy process. We've got a further report to come back to the CEH team around um, recommitting again the importance of reporting and the importance of policy application. Um, with some follow-up actions around um, work-based work training and learning where um, HR officers will work alongside management teams to, to look at the policy application. So we, we've completed a, a vast amount of work already in this area. We now need some very specific and targeted work in areas of under reporting. Okay, I mean, it's good to see that we are kind of uh, taking steps to uh, tighten up on compliance. And I think it would be useful if we could have maybe a, another report, maybe in maybe three months' time, just to, to review where things are up to. Uh, I think that should go to. Um, uh, audit risk management and, and back to him as well, just to, to come so we can regularly keep on top of this issue. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, people are okay with that. So, can we read the recommendations of the, uh, um, that were referred to as by audit risk management and further reports updates in three months' time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Chris. Okay. And I think we are in the final item, which is item 11, which is the Audit and Risk Management Committee Annual Report 2016-17, um, which has again been, been referred to us from the Audit Risk Management Committee, and we're just being asked uh, to um, approve this, and then it will go on to, uh, we'll approve the noting, and it'll go to the council. So can we, can we agree that? Yeah. Okay. Now, before we finish, um, this is Sergit's final meeting, cabinet meeting, before he goes, goes to, to new pastures at, at Sandwell. It will be remiss of me to not um, express our sincere appreciation, Sergit, of the uh, eight years, seven and a half years. It seems to go very quickly. I remember being on the appointments panel. Uh, so it's all my fault. Um, no, but seriously, um, I, I do want to just put on record our thanks to Sergit for, uh, for his excellent work as the monitoring officer head of law over, over that period of time. Um, you know, it's been uh, some, some occasions quite challenging, but I think for, throughout you've always provided really good advice. Um, and I do just want to take this opportunity to thank you, Sergit, for your work with Will and wishing you all the best in your, your new uh, host at, at Sandhill. And I uh, hope all that goes well. But thank you very much, I think, from, from all that to the cabinet. Yeah, yeah.